So even though JavaScript is super popular and really widely used and arguably is the most popular programming language out there today, it still gets a pretty bad rap from a lot of people. And there are a lot of reasons for this, but one of them is that JavaScript isn't a strongly typed language. And so what that means is that when we define a variable or a function in JavaScript, out of the box, there's really no way we can describe what kind of variable we might want to define, whether it's a string or an array or an object. And likewise, there's no way for us to say anything about the types of arguments that a function takes, whether it's a number or a boolean. And similarly, there's really no way for us to say anything about what kind of data that function might return. And so obviously, we can get by just fine without any kind of type information. And we've done that ever since JavaScript has existed. But there's a lot of benefit if we are able to have type information. If we think about languages like Java or C Sharp, which are strongly typed languages, a lot of debugging time gets saved right out of the box because that type information is there. And that's essentially because an application just won't work. It won't compile if a type is used incorrectly. Now that's all a little bit conceptual, so why don't we see a couple examples just to clarify things here. So I'm going to just create a new file and I'll call this nontyped.js. And so within this file, let's create a function. So I'm gonna make a function and I'll just call this multiply. So any kind of multiply function, you might take two numbers and return the result of them being multiplied. So I'll say we wanna return x times y. All right, so then we could call this multiply function and we could pass two numbers and this would give us what we would expect. It would return the number six. So what about the case though, where the name of the function isn't all that indicative of what it does perhaps, and it's not all that clear as to what kind of arguments the function should take. So somebody using this function, say you created a library and you expose this function publicly. What if somebody comes along and they try to pass a string? So instead of passing a number, they might say, Bob and three. Well, right now there's really no way for us to see that this would be an incorrect usage of this function. As far as we can tell here in our editor, this would be a perfectly valid way to use this function. And it wouldn't be until we went to run the application that we would eventually find out there is an error going on here because a string times a number just doesn't make sense. And this can cause all sorts of headaches and problems because sometimes these things just aren't caught that easily. So thankfully there's a way to solve this and that's by using TypeScript. And essentially TypeScript is its own language. It's a language created by Microsoft. And essentially what it does is it allows us to use type information in our JavaScript. And there's a whole process where we have to take our TypeScript and then convert it to regular JavaScript so that it can be understood by the browser. And we'll talk about that more later. But for now, let's see TypeScript in action a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is comment this out here and I'll come over here and create a new file. And this one we'll call typed. .ts, so .ts for TypeScript. Now let's implement the same thing, but this time we'll use some type information. So again, we'll say we want to create a function and we'll call it multiply, and we want to pass x and y, and then we want to return x times y. So the difference this time though, is that we can actually define what types these parameters are. So in this case, we'll say we want x to be a number, and we want y to be a number. So with these types defined, this time if we go to call the function and we pass something that is not allowable, then we're gonna get an error. So if we say Bob times three, what we see is it's underlined in our VS Code editor here, and we've got argument of type string is not assignable to the parameter of type number. So here in our definition, we're saying that X has to be a number, and when we go to pass it anything else, whether it be a string or an array, for instance, we're gonna get an error because all that should really be going in there is a number. So now if you make a library or something that another developer has to consume, or even if it's just yourself, if you're writing application code that you'll interface with later, assigning types to things is going to allow you to be safer. And so what would happen is if we went to call this function and we had something that was incorrect passed in, we would see that we would get an error when this code goes to transpile. And we'll see that in action a little bit later on. But for now, we can take a look at the other things we might do with TypeScript. So let's say, for instance, that we wanted to create a variable and we wanted to be sure that only a certain type was going to be used for that variable. So for example, let's create a person variable and let's make sure that the person variable is a string. 
So for example, if person was to be used later on in the application and we did something like person equals four, well, we've got an error here. And the error says type number is not assignable to type string. So again, what we're doing here is we're putting in some safety checks for ourselves. We're essentially covering ourselves and making sure that we're using our functions and our variables and everything else correctly. So this is beneficial in our applications for a few reasons. One of them being that it's easier to debug what we're doing. So for example, if we pass an incorrect argument here, we can see right away that it's wrong. We don't have to wait until we run the application in the browser and see that we've made a mistake. We can just see it right in front of us right here. Another benefit of TypeScript though, is that it gives us a lot more information about how to use various libraries and various different pieces of code when we're actually creating our applications. And so what I mean by that is let's say that we knew we had a multiply function here, but we didn't know exactly what it expected. So for instance, we might think that multiply takes an array of numbers and multiplies them all together. Or maybe we might think it's a variadic function and it can take any given number of arguments. Well, TypeScript is helpful in these scenarios because we can see right away what it is that this function expects. So what we can see here is that we are to pass in two numbers, X and Y. So this is really helpful when we're consuming other libraries. When we use Angular 2 or any third-party libraries that go along with Angular 2, we can get a sense right here in our editor about how to use the code. So those are a few of the pretty simplistic scenarios that we would see with TypeScript, but there's a lot more that you can do with it as well. We'll see some more on how to use it once we get into writing the application, and I will definitely have some more advanced material on TypeScript here on Angular Cast in the future. But this will give us just enough understanding of TypeScript for the application that we're about to write.